obvious, talk to you. obvious pun, I guess. <laughs> so why? Why? I guess, I guess mainly because of the pun. The pun is, is meant kind of thing, you know. I've worked to do the highest show on earth, you know. And uh, I don't know, last time, we, first time we came to Toronto, seeing this place and knowing that you could get up here and do a show and kind of get, get the, this kind of view while we're playing, you know. It's kind of like the view is, it's not, the band isn't really the focus, the music is the focus and then the, the hot being, you know, this high up and getting this kind of view. Is, so you're the bar band tonight? I guess so, it's kind of lounge music. Um, lounge music with a difference. Do you feel like it's almost like you're the first person on the moon to be up here? No, do you? Well, the, the, highest, the highest, gig in, highest gig in the world. You've made the Guinness Book of World Records. I think it's the highest freestanding gig. They have to make that mm -hmm. distinction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to do airplanes next. So far in your life, what other high places have you been in? Not many, because I don't like heights. Oh, you don't? No. This is That's why you've got your back facing. Yeah, I'm pretty nauseous so. too. I, I completely have a phobia of heights. Right. So you too? Pretty much, yeah. I don't mind flying. I just don't like you know, this kind of place. I don't really go in for this. We were talking about um, uh, you, the this, the album being completely like uh, of and about love and heartbreak, and you were talking about wanting to write songs a la Tammy Wynette. I guess I guess I've thought more about that since, but they're not. They're, they're kind of more than. They're not autobiographical. In the, I think once once you've written the song, the author of the song becomes. Isn't important anymore. Like I don't listen to a Tammy Wynette song and think this is a song about Tammy Wynette's broken relationship or whatever. You relate the song to yourself. You don't, you know, when you listen to the Righteous Brothers singing, you've lost that love and feeling. I mean, you don't consider the writer and his his kind of, uh, you know, what the story was behind that song. You relate that song to you. And I think it's only a kind of uh, it's kind of pop media that sells the personality. You know, sells the. I think mostly that's because. You know, they sell the fashion or the, you know, the look or the face or whatever because the music's kind of inferior. It's almost like they need to back up the music with something, like this kind of stuff. You know? I don't, don't generally think this is uh, as important as the music. Incredibly 
debilitating emotional crisis. They get out of it. And I'm wondering, like, yeah, how the much thing of it about was, that like, is really yeah, what you that's were what people feeling. Want. Yeah, exactly. That's what people want the album to be. And the odd thing about it is I wasn't feeling like that when the album was done. I was actually had uh, probably the best years of my life. So were you so kind of like with, um, writing a fictional story then? Not really, because people do, like you say, people do go through that. People do feel that. People do feel those kind of extreme emotions. But uh, I wanted to capture that more than... Uh, more than it was part of my life at that time. I have lived through what you've been singing about. Okay, this, so, so to indicate a, the desperate state of mind that I have been in, I've, I've brought some books that I've been reading, and I, I want to get some... Uh, um, uh, love advice from, from Jason Pierce. Okay, the first one, Escape from Intimacy, Untangling Love Addiction. Yeah, they're all of these. <laughs> now this How one... How much time do you have? I make time. This is like the, uh, uh, the rendering. This is supposed to be a diagram of what love is. Would you agree? to let go um, the idea here that um, that oh, how do you how do you how do you avoid becoming a stalker after your love is finished after your relationship is over how do you avoid how, how do you avoid do you... stalking the person that you're in love with yeah I, I guess uh, I guess you just step back one one step and take a look at yourself and it's kind of unattractive isn't it? Thank you very much, Jason Pierce. Good luck, and hopefully you won't have too nauseous of a show up here at the top of the CN Tower. We're going to be hearing a video from Spiritualizes Electricity. Ladies and gentlemen, we're floating in space.